My name is Jyoti Dugar. Um, I work at the National Institutes of Health um, as one of their chief information security officers for their main clinical center, which is the, the main biomedical research hospital. Uh, it's actually the largest in, in the nation. Um, so I take a lot of pride in that, um, learned a lot. Um, and my, as a CISO for the NIH Clinical Center, um, I'm responsible for pretty much maintaining um, this, a good security posture for all of their medical instruments, medical devices, as well as any normal system um, uh, that, that you would uh, encounter in any organization. Uh, but we are a full-fledged hospital, um, so we have everything and anything that a normal hospital would have. Um, and we're also under the federal government, so we, um, so we run the gamut on the complexity and different types of systems that, that you can imagine that we have. <laughs> So as a CISO, um, when I first came um, about seven years ago to the NIH Clinical Center, um, there weren't, um, there wasn't a big emphasis on security. Um, you know, we, we were, we are a hospital. Um, our primary care is taking care of the patients, doing clinical um, research, um, patient care. Um, so one of the biggest challenges was. Um, Introducing security um, to doctors, nurses, scientists, researchers, as well as executive management, um, and it was regarded as a um, kind of a um, uh, a block to th their 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 jobs. But I would say in the last seven years, um, it's improved dramatically um, based on recent events that have been happening. That that kind of played a part as well, but but also just the mindset and culture. Um, I was able to get that to to change um, as well as to enhance um, their knowledge and what could happen if security wasn't taken seriously. Um, so that's that's really improved a lot. Um, I would say for medical devices and instruments, it's still an ongoing process, um, but we are uh, at least introducing these concepts to the medical device vendors as well, um, because ideally they would be the one that would be responsible for securing their medical devices. Um, but the word is getting out there, we're doing the best we can. Um, one other challenge that um, I would say that we face is um, when you come from a government perspective, um, funding resources is always a, a key. Um, important topic to, to consider. Um, so rather than just always saying we need more resources, we try to uh, do things a little out of the box sometimes or come up with different ways of tackling um, some of our, our, our challenges instead of always asking for more resources or, or more money. Um, so one way we, we looked at um, outsourcing, um, uh, not security per se, but where we can outsource, we try to do that. Um, so let's say we try to um, put uh, systems in the cloud where it makes sense. Um, we don't, we haven't gotten to a point where putting systems that have a lot of PI, PII, PHI in the cloud, but we are starting to kind of move towards some of our low key public facing systems that, hey, all the data is public anyway. Um, and that might be one way of, of, of um, and not to say that we're putting it in the cloud and just leaving it out there, but, um, you know, it's a little bit easier on, on our end where if we don't have to worry about at least some of the security aspects. Um, so that's, um, and also I would say finding the right people for um, your own teams. Um, so I think before I, 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 when I came into the job, I inherited um, personnel um, and I was given an opportunity later to, to um, hire more personnel and then you can really uh, find what, what you need if you know what you're looking for. So I would, I'm blessed to say today that I have a great team of um, security personnel with um, all kinds of skill sets. Um, as you know, security is not just a technical field. Um, there's a lot of different aspects of security. You know, you have to be somewhat technical, but then you also have to have good management, project management skills, organizational skills, um, and even some sort of psychology would, would help too, because you have to know how to interact, deal with different people in different ways. Um, so, um, so I try to bring in a lot of diversity and cultures to my own team so that, you know, we don't have just one mindset um, that w when we're reaching out to customers, because our customers are doctors, nurses, scientists, researchers, and also IT staff that are very technical. So you have to know how to talk to the technical side of things. You also have to know how to talk to clinical um, staff um, who, who may not be technical and how to 
you know, put things in a certain way that, that they would understand and they would really relate to. Yes, I truly believe women can make great leaders. Um, I think it's sometimes it's just giving them a little bit of a nudge that they can do it. Um, so, you know, I feel like sometimes as a woman, I know for myself, you know, you have a lot of self-doubt. Um, you don't want to put yourself out there sometimes or it might be too risky. Um, or you're trying to um, have a work-life balance that you feel like, oh, if you take one step further in your career, you might not have that. But I, I, speaking from my own experience, I do feel like you can do anything that you put yourself, um, your, your mind to. Um, you just have to have that goal and you have to just envision yourself as achieving that goal. And um, I have three kids myself um, and, you know, I have this position and I feel like you could do what, what, what you want. Um, so I've been encouraging young women, um, even as, as early as middle school, high school, when I speak to them, like, hey, you know, you can do anything that any male um, uh, can, can do. So even, we have girls in football teams these days. Um, so I told them, you know, when, when they're looking for careers, don't just focus on things that you feel um, that you can feel comfortable with. Sometimes you have to feel a little un uncomfortable because then you know it's worth it. Because um, everything is too easy and too comfortable, then you know you might not be getting the the, the satisfaction, and fulfillment inside that 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 you need and that you want. Um, so I put myself out there when I first came. Um, I had self doubts as well. All my staff was was males, as you can imagine. Um, you know, senior executives were males. Um, you look across the board. Um, we are a hospital, so you did see a lot of females, but really not in a technical role, and especially not in, in, in leadership. Um, so it, it, you know, it took a lot of um, courage, I think, to just put yourself in that boat um, and then come up with the right, right kind of skills. And as a woman, I do feel that we do have a lot to offer. Um, we can be tough where needed, um, but sometimes being tough isn't really the, the best way to go. Um, sometimes just being empathetic um, and trying to understand the other person's perspective and then trying to figure out how to best approach that person or approach the topic. Um, and I, I do feel that sometimes when you have a, a lot of males in the room or a lot of males, um, uh, across the board, they have a certain mindset and they're kind of stuck with that particular mindset, which is more of a, hey, I, I said this, need this to happen. It's more of a tough, um, I said so, so please do it kind of mindset versus I think as a woman and um, where females are, are great at is really understanding like, okay, here's a topic, um, we need a solution, here's a solution I'm thinking. Um, but it, let's get your opinion on it as well, um, or your perspective, and let's see if we can really work as a, as a team on this, um, even if it's different levels of management. Um, I do that with, with my team as well. I don't just go and bark orders at them and just expect them to do it. I'm like, okay, here's um, a problem. Let's come up with a solution, and then who's you know what do you have to offer? Um, so I know different people offer different different kinds of technical skills, but also personal skills um, as well as organizational skills. So I truly feel like if you kind of put every everyone in um, a basket, it's like okay, you offer your best part, you offer your best part. Um, it it blends together more naturally and more organically versus. I'm just going to assign somebody to do it, um, and I'm just going to tell them to do it, and it really doesn't drive well. Um, but I have been speaking at, um, at universities um, as well as uh, at the at the school level as well, just to encourage women to go out there, take risks, don't be afraid. There's really no mistakes um, it, it, that you can make. Um, you know, if you if you applied for something or you went out of the box and you did something and it didn't go in your favor, that's just something for you to learn from. Okay, maybe you'll try something different next time. Um, or you might have learned something from that experience um, or you might have been a role model for others. Like, hey, she put herself out there. May not have gone the way you, you expected, but that's other people are learning from you. You can learn from others um, and you can learn from the experience as well. Okay, maybe I'll do something different next time or I'll take what I learned from this experience into the next. I really don't feel like there's really any mistakes um, you can make. So I think I just want to drive that point across to, to women to just feel comfortable um, or go beyond what you're comfortable with doing and just, just go, go, go out there. Just really nothing bad that could really happen out of that. I do, I do believe it's improving. Um, I don't necessarily think it's 100% it's yet, but I think we are in a better shape than we were 
even five years ago, five, six years ago. Um, so I think they, they are starting to see the, the benefit, um, and not just in women, but just including diversity, different cultures, different perspectives, and different backgrounds. Um, and uh, especially as women, I think you're bringing all of those, um, as, as well as just a whole different way of um, dealing with problems, dealing with um, just different situations that might come about. Um, but I also feel like you do have to prove yourself as well. So I don't think it's a it's a given that oh okay we have a um, a female leader uh, in this role. And sometimes when you have a male leader in this in, in a particular role, it's just assumed that okay this person knows everything and and they're regarded as someone higher than they even may be. But I think I do still see when you have a female leader in that role. It, there is a little bit of time that that person still has to prove herself. Um, where okay, let's just let's see if she's really um, in in the right position or how did she get there. Um, so I think I, I, I did feel that when I first got here as well that okay, I, I got the job, but you still have to take some time, and that time could be years um, to really prove that hey, you know, I got this job for a reason. I can do it, um, and and it's, and I did find it's not just proving yourself to your to management or executives but it's also proving yourself to your subordinates or whoever you might be managing as well because there might be times where they may have wanted a job and they didn't get it um so you so you and then now you have a female um leader in that job um so you really have to go out there and show that hey i'm not i didn't get this job because i'm a female i got this job because you know i i have the technical skills i have the management the organization the leadership skills so you have to start small. You have to have a big vision, but you can't just, um, you, you got to take small steps, baby steps to, to get to your big vision. But it's um, sometimes just writing out your vision in some sort of proposal or some sort of um, manner and showing to your management that here's my broader vision for maybe the next five years. Here's my vision for maybe the next three years. And then here's my vision for the next year. Um, and then here's I'm planning to get there. Um, so just showing management or executives that you know you have a plan. You're not just coming in here to uh, you know pick and choose or, or just do things out of the fly. That really probably won't get you where, where you want to be. Um, so just showing that you're organized. You know what you want. This, here's the vision, and having them. Um, having the stakeholders like executive management approve that vision too. Because um, if you're heading in a, certain, in a certain direction and they're kind of wondering what you're doing or what is your end goal here, that might not be the, the best way to go about it. But just showing them like, okay, um, I did all my research. Here's the experience I brought with me that showed that I've tried different things in the past. That either they did go well and that's what I want to do here or they didn't go well and I learned from that. Um, and this is how I'm going to change it here. But ideally, this is where, and also tying that back to the mission and the organization. Um, I have a lot of DOD background, um, and it's a very different um, uh, you know, lifestyle there. So if I brought, the, and, uh, you know, for me, when I brought that initially here, oh, this is how we did it in DOD. But we're at a main uh, research hospital. There's clinical care, um, patient care going on. You just can't bring that same perspective. But it helps to have that perspective of how, okay, ideally we want to be here. Um, but at, at a hospital, okay, there's, there's a little bit of a give and take. Um, you can't just stop an MRI scanner to do patching when a patient's in there. Um, so just understanding the organization you're in now um, and the goal and the vision and getting stakeholders um, and executives, especially executive management's buy-in and input on that really helps. So they know that you have a set, you know, you have a goal, they agree with that goal, here's the direction you're gonna go. And if there's any changes in that direction, you know, communicating that. Um, and I do also believe that helps manage your um, subordinates as well. So they know that, okay, we have a new manager, here, you know, here's the, her plan, and they, whether they agree with the plan or not, at least they know, okay, this is the plan. Um, and then I also do, I truly value other people's um, input too. So I don't go out there and just say, oh, give me all your ideas, but I say, here's my idea and here's where I want to go with this. Um, but if you do really see any red flags with it, you know, I'd love to know because I don't want to get to the end goal and then have someone say, well, well, we kind of told you this um, isn't going to work from the beginning. But I, so I, I, I don't disvalue anyone just because um, just because of the position that they're in or the level that they're in. You know, I, I feel like everybody has something to contribute um, and, you know, I'd love to hear it. So I actually 
uh, I love getting um, constructive uh, feedback from everyone, not just you know criticism, but I do ask them like if you have something to say, put it in a constructive manner so that you know people can truly learn learn from others, from yourself, from mistakes, from um, you know lessons learned. Um, but I do feel like you, you, you do, coming back to the um, question, you do have to take baby steps to get to your vision. Um, but knowing what those baby steps um, are um, and then communicating that to uh, you know, uh, higher uh, levels, um, to your subordinates, and, and also multiple teams, because security is not something you can do with one person or just a security office and, uh, most of the time. It's, it's, it almost always involves multiple other teams, like different groups, different, um, different stakeholders even, and even different um, organizations. So it's not just the NIH uh, security office or, or technical teams, it might involve vendors, it might involve other organizations that we um, uh, conduct business with or we need information from, so making sure that all stakeholders kind of know um, where you're going, what the new policies might be, what are, your, what, what are the long-term goals, um, so they know how to get there, including medical device vendors. If you tell them, hey, you know, in a year we're gonna require two-factor authentication, um, they might not be able to do it now, but at least they know, okay, in a year we might not be able to do business with healthcare organizations or NIH if we don't get there. So that's really helped as well. So my thoughts on where cybersecurity in, in general is gonna go is, it, it's it's going to be the number one thing. Um, it's not going to go away. I think it's only going to get bigger um, and and better. Um, you know, as we come across uh, a lot of uh, IoT, um, Internet of Things kind of devices, everything's online these days. People's uh, pacemakers, um, IV pumps, everything has an IP address. And when you start putting things out there, um, it, you know, there's more chances for them to be. Um, uh, compromised, um, but then that also means that there's more of a chance for you to, um, uh, opportunity for you to, to secure them as well. Um, specifically in the healthcare world, um, I think it is um, becoming bigger already, the emphasis on healthcare security. I know it wasn't there previously, so I'm, I'm happy to see that the there is a lot of um, attention on healthcare security because it is a big deal. Um, you, know, you definitely don't want to be an MRI scanner and have it compromised and either it stops in the middle of it um, or something happens, um, or even IV pumps. You know, you don't want the wrong kind of um, uh, liquids or whatever you're getting into you, um, you know, be compromised because that could be a life in that situation. Um, you know, pacemakers, um, anything that they're putting IP addresses on these days, you know, there's a, a huge risk to that. Um, so I, I do feel in the medical industry we, we can do um, a better job um, in trying to secure these medical um, instruments and, and actually um, uh, working with the manufacturers and FDA on, on securing these. Um, I think there, there really needs to be a big emphasis um, on that. Um, I think we're heading that direction, um, but I think we can do a better job um, in that. But just in general, uh, cybersecurity, I think there's there's just so much exciting stuff that's coming, automation, um, you know, having robots um, do things for you. Um, and even in the healthcare sector, if you, uh, a lot of surgeries these days, um, it's not actually the surgeon performing, they're actually using robots to perform the surgery. So it's just amazing things to see. Maybe in the future there might be, I um, uh, uh, think it's, it's already there. I think it's just gonna be even uh, cooler in the future of uh, telemetric, um, uh, devices where you don't have to even be in the same room. There are surgeries that can happen with a surgeon just, you know, pushing some buttons. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's, it's scary, but also uh, very exciting things to come. <laughs>